we are here now to say because we know that on the 27th which is this coming friday we have a closing date for the ncop parliament process of public participation so before we can even submit submit our last public um, submissions to the ncop we just needed to have this conversation so that we know what we are dealing with um so i will start at from my right right and the, that is david uh, from SATU. Uh, SATU is an organization the, of teachers in South Africa, so he will elaborate more who he is and what he does. And next to him is Miss Denise, Denise Nicholson, um, who's been a scholar, scholarly, he's, oh, she's owning a scholarly horizon um, company, but she's been working with Vets University, she's a librarian. She is a historian that understands this bill and where it's coming from, so she's going to give us a bit of a background of, on that. And next to her is our beautiful and sexy Kyla <laughs> Magnati, <laughs> an artist manager, so she understands the musicians and the musicians' experience and history. She's taking the care of everyone and including us and even Ben, even in his old age. Um, <laughs> and next to Kyla, we've got um, Mr. Douglas Scott. He is very technical, the lawyer in all of us here. We don't even understand these things that we read. We run to him. Um, but he's also working for Wikimedia Foundation, which is, if you go to your Google, you will understand that Google um, works with a lot with the wiki, what they call Wikipedia. So Wikimedia Foundation is the one that is hosting Wikimedia. Am I right, Douglas? The, yes, the, the Wikimedia Foundation runs the servers that Wikipedia is based on. But Wikipedia, edited by uh, thousands of volunteer editors, please give editing Wikipedia a go. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. And next to him, we've got Mr. Everything <laughs> next to me, uh, Mr. Ben Keston. He once worked with Nelson Mandela's uh, in, in his first term office as an advisor in that team. Uh, so he's a bit of a politician, that he, but he does not want to talk about that a lot, but sorry, Ben, I had to do that. Mm -hmm. And the second part is he's been a producer of the Big Debate Show. And he's also a co-founder of Recreate uh, Foundation, and he's also an owner of Black Stripe Foundation, and he's the one that brought us all here, everyone here in, as the panelist. And next to me is this beautiful, gorgeous mama of ours in Africa, Mama Africa. Yeah. I call her in, 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 in the acting um, space. This is Miss Nambi Tampumluana. She's been everywhere. She's been in Hollywood. She's been in the biggest soapies in the country. So she's going to share with us her experience and how copyrights amendment bill affects her. And lastly, we have... Um, Mr. Jay Snare from Blind SA, Christo, I'm sorry about that, Christo uh, from um, Blind SA. Um, is she an assistant director? Vice president, Vice president of, of, of um, Blind SA. Um, she has, the Blind SA has been having a lot of issues with our president and this bill and he's going to share a lot of that and how they got us to where we are with regards to this bill and the reason why we are back in parliament today. So thank you so much and welcome everyone uh, to this um, wonderful discussion and please join us in it. Um, this is just a public participation. We just want to find out where people are and where people's opinions and thoughts are. So I'm going to start with Dennis. Um, she's going to give us a bit of a background of how we got here in the first place. Over to you, Dennis. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, yes, I want to tell you that our Copyright Act um, comes from 1978. Um, I, when I was working at WITS, I got to hear that uh, there were going to be changes in the copyright law, and this was in 1998. And so I took it to our vice chancellor and I said, I think we need to do something about this. So he took it to the executive of the umbrella body for the universities in South Africa. And I was mandated to set up a task team. Um, which I included all sorts of people, including government officials, um, lecturers, and various people. And we lobbied and stopped those regulations. 
Uh, again, in 2000, they wanted to amend the copyright itself, and we again lobbied and stopped them. It wasn't an easy task. It took a long time to do. But what we did get is a help is help pro bono from a Johannesburg intellectual property company who actually helped us for 18 months um, to get our submissions in, and we managed to stop them. So after that, it was 2002, um, 2000, um, 2000, sorry, we tried to get discussions going with the publishers, but nothing worked. And for years and years, we've been lobbying and lobbying and lobbying. So finally, the bill comes along. The Department of Trade and Industry decided that they must do something about the reform. So in 2009, they started doing research, um, assessments, um, looking at different uh, reports um, to see what they need to do. They also set up a commission um, with Justice uh, Farlam to look at the music industry to see why people were not getting royalties. And that report uh, came out in 2011. Then the uh, Minister of Trade and in Industry, where copyright falls under, um, announced that he is going to be uh, amending the bill. So I wrote to them and I said, hey, we've been calling for 20 years or so. What about education and libraries and the disabled, etc.?" So I was invited to go to the Department of Trade and Industry to look at, uh, speak to their law, um, the whole law team. And they said, well, now what do you want? So I, I said to them, look, you know, we've been calling for um, education, research, libraries, archives, etc., and disabled for as long as uh, 1998, you must include it in the bill. So they asked me to send various documents, which I sent hundreds of documents, including WIPO treaties, research findings, the Eiffel model law, and key, key um, clauses that I thought we need in the bill. And fortunately, they did include a lot of those things in the bill. Then um, in 2015, the bill was published. Um, not a very well-drafted bill, so a lot of people complained about the shoddy way of um, drafting this bill. But they also had a, multi, a lot of workshops and a multi-stakeholder conference in um, Gauteng, where all stakeholders had a chance to present on the bill and then to make submissions. Um, then the bill went to Parliament in 2017 to the um, Portfolio Committee on Trade and Industry, and it actually went right through to 2021 in that uh, particular House of Parliament. Um, it went through various um, amendments uh, via um, calls for submissions, public hearings. Um, there were uh, public hearings in August 2017. I presented on behalf of the library and educational sector and was the only slot given to libraries and archives and education. Um, I also presented in 2021, uh, um, but then we had a lot more people representing us at that stage. Um, but unfortunately, there was pressure from the uh, US trade representative who threatened trade sanctions against South Africa if we went ahead with this bill. And also the EU uh, wrote to the uh, pre uh, president and pressured them not to uh, pass this bill. On the other side, Blind SA was getting you know, impatient with the delay in the bill because the president sat on the bill for 15 months. It was approved, first of all, by the National Assembly. Um, in 2019, and then it sat on his desk for 15 months. So Blind SA took them to court, uh, the president to court, the Concord, and said, act in terms of section 79.1 of the bill. That means you've got to either sign or send it back to, for review on constitutional issues only. So with the pressure from the um, international side and Blind SA's court case, the president probably felt, well, I better just send it back. So he sent it back. On, uh, with, um, he didn't send the whole bill back, he sent back sections relating to education, fair use, education and libraries and archives, not the disabled section. So those sections were sent back for review and again there was a whole process of reviews and um, calls for public hearings and what have you. Um, then um, the bill was, that was in 2020. Then there was a decision because of unfortunate situation was the, the, comp the um, committee that was working on the bill and passed it were quite au fait with the bill by that time. But then a new committee came in because of the elections. Um, and so I don't think all of them really understood the concept and the complexities of the bill. So when there were questions like, 
Should this bill go forward, or should we retag it to, uh, to a provincial bill rather than a national bill? Maybe the provinces should also have a say. Um, there were various questions about fair use. So then they decided, OK, just retag this bill, have more hearings about fair use and other, and also to show that this bill is constitutional or not, because a lot of people said it wasn't, and it wasn't in relation to our international commitments. So it went back. And unfortunately, the retagging of the bill means that instead of it just being a national bill, it now has to go to our, all nine provinces, to the provincial legislators, who now also will ask for um, new submissions and public hearings in relation to the whole bill, because it's treated as a new bill. So this is another long process. So as you can see, it's been delayed and you know, constant um, problems with this bill. We've had serious um, opposition to this bill. Um, where you know, people just do not want this bill for political reasons, for economic reasons, for every other reason. Um, so just to say, the National Assembly finally passed the bill, Bill um, 13D of 2017 on the 21st of September. Um, we've now got a bill that we're fairly happy with. There are some things that we're not happy with, but we do have a lot of what we wanted. Um, but again, there's still a lot of opposition. So the bill that's here now being asked for uh, its uh, submissions um, is the B, um, D version, and we've got till Friday to submit. Already some people and organizations have submitted, but please, I ask you to submit, even if you just write one sentence and say, I'm writing in my personal capacity and just explain who you are, and I wish to support this bill. That would be sufficient. The more people who um, submit, the better. If you want to say more about your organization and why you think this bill is, please do. But as long as you support the bill, uh, we'd be grateful. Um, and then um, there will be hearings, uh, I understand, on about the 27th of February and early in March. I think it's the 10th or 7th of March or so. There will be on online and public hearings. Um, so anybody who, who wants to make a presentation uh, in your submission, please just say that you also want to be considered for a presentation. And I just ask you, please, all support the bill, because not only do educators and libraries and users need it, every creator, every artist, every publisher needs other, pe other people's works. They need to use it, remix it, you know, to create new works. How do they use it if they don't have these facilities? And that fair use and all these provisions will make it possible for all stakeholders to use information, not just users as separate from publishers or artists and creators. And Thank musicians you. have to remix, um, and they can't if they don't have the options to do so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dennis. I think we've just learned there of how prolonged the policy making process is in South Africa. And I think it's very important for all of us as a society to get to understand the complexities of policy making in the country and how we need as civil society and as South Africans to push for the policies that we need to push for. And I think the, the right person to speak to that, who started a campaign in 2018, but he's also been there as, a, as, as an influencer in the policy making himself because he was an advisor to the very first democratic president of this country. Mr. Ben Kirsten, what do you have to say? Thanks very much, Anati. So I was going to spend um, just under five minutes giving the sort of political framing of the copyright reform that we've been using as a um, coalition of different stakeholders. And um, maybe we could put the PowerPoint on the screen. Um, to start with, uh, the um, main framing is that this is about power, this is about um, undoing, pulling apart the colonial power relations that Africa has faced. Knowledge is a mechanism of control and domination. IP could work beautifully in an ideal world where there are creators, inventors, and artists, and then there's an audience, users, and consumers. But the way we've framed it is that the complexity comes and the difficulty comes from managing the world of intermediaries who hold lots of the rights, who manage um, access to 
copyrighted works. And obviously on the screen you can see those that are relevant to patents in the medicines field, um, but also publishers and record companies that are the main ones when it comes to copyright. But also there in the corner, the collecting societies that are intermediaries between users and musicians and creators when it comes to distribution of royalties. So <clears throat> that's a political framing that says people are being exploited on both sides. Creators, inventors, and artists can't get their work rapidly and affordably out there and make a living out of them, and audiences can't access what they need to access. Um, these are examples of South Africans who, over the last centuries, have been exploited in their um, creative work by some of those intermediaries from our photographers that were taking pictures during the uprisings of 1976, to our actors who played famous uh, figures in African history, to Solomon Linda, who composed the, the, the song that later became Wim Away, The Lion Sleeps Tonight, who sadly died a pauper despite the fact that um, movie uh, studios and others made literally billions in that case from his work. Um, and then, of course, touching on the overlap with traditional knowledge, communities who have medicines and cures and herbs that um, they have been custodians of for generations but are now being exploited by multinational corporations. Our first major fight, not over copyright but IP, so, you know, in South Africa we've been here before, was the fight for affordable, accessible antiretrovirals, in which Zaki Ahmed teamed up with our former president, and we suggested that we would bring in um, parallel importing and uh, compulsory licensing, and just the suggestion that we might do that, we've never actually done it, um, but we put the, the bill on the, on the statute to be able to do it, meant that antiretrovirals came down in South Africa from 12,000 US dollars per patient per year to what they cost now, about 300. So we get very, very little of the income from IP, from copyright royalties globally. We don't, we don't even appear on the schedule of income from IP. We are Africa you know, let alone South Africa, is under all other at the bottom of the global scale of, of royalties. Um, now, in the, the bill produced by the ANC government after all of the consultation that Denise spoke about, there's a very strategic approach which we support as a social movement, which is to address the grievances of the artists and the creators on one side with fair royalties and the needs of society to access knowledge, on the other hand, with fair use and exceptions and limitations to copyright. We think conceptually and politically, it's an extremely good, strategically well put together bill. It's not drafted, you know, absolutely perfectly. There's some full stops in the wrong place. There's some, you know, double wordings. I mean, I'm being a little bit facetious because it is said often that this bill is fatally flawed. The other side say it's fatally flawed. Lord. They never put forward alternative draftings. We think, generally as a movement, it's extremely good. It contains all the provisions, pretty much all the provisions that a modern copyright bill for the, the digital era needs to have in it. It makes it much easier to break through the the scams of scientific and academic publishing. I can't go into the detail. Nelson Mandela's um, autobiography we found on sale in South Africa for twice the real price, let, let alone purchasing power parity price that it is on sale in the United States or the UK. Um, why? Because the publishers want to sell to a small section of our very unequal society that can pay twice the price. They're not interested in selling to the rest of the population. Um, when it comes to artists and, and musicians, um, these are well-known graphs from around the world showing the tiny fraction of income that comes to the musicians. Um, similar situation with performers who in South Africa are not entitled to royalties at all. So actors not entitled to um, any royalties from the streaming services, from the broadcasters, as they are in many other countries. 
So these are the provisions of the bill. Royalty sharing, fair royalties for actors, musicians, writers, artists. Collective management reform, so that collecting societies are more accountable to their members and less able to run away with the money. A resale royalty right for fine artists if their works become um, you know, hits and, and a huge amount of money is made from them. Commissioned works to be more easily available to um, those who created them, not just automatically owned by those who commissioned them. Reversion rights, moral rights for authors. Fair use with a very stringent four-step test, as in all fair use around the world, with a magical such as um, incidental and public works to be available for um, people to take photos of and so on, the so-called freedom of panorama, and digital exceptions for those involved in um, reverse engineering computer programs, machine learning, all that sort of stuff. We think it's pretty good. It combines fair royalties and fair use. In other words, fair copyright. The thing that has slowed it down for 15 years is the misinformation and the lobbying and the campaigning by those with a vested interest in the status quo. We are not quite sure if they are most troubled by fair royalties or if they are most troubled by fair use. Perhaps they're troubled by both because they have an economic interest in not paying people adequately and they have an economic interest, probably you know, a misplaced desire not to have fair use and have works more readily available. So we see the publishers and the media companies and all of those lobbying against the bill, not being very specific about what they don't like. They've never really spoken about not liking fair royalties, but fair royalties is probably the main thing they don't like. Um, but they wouldn't want to come out openly and say, we don't want to pay people um, for their artistic contributions to the works that we own the copyright in. So that's the political framing. We are constantly fighting a battle to get accurate information out. And my main message is read the Copyright Amendment Bill in South Africa. It's not a bad effort strategically and politically at combining what is needed for creators and users of copyrighted works. Thank you. Thank you, Ben, um, for that um, very heartfelt explanation um, and taking us through the political understanding of, of the bill and how it's affecting our personal lives. Um, just to move forward, um, we all know that the world is moving from um, the internet space, the fourth industrial revolution, right? And that's where the world is right now. So where, whatever businesses that we do, it's all on the internet, and the internet space is going to be very important, especially for us Africans and the in misinformation that has been there. Here's an opportunity for us as Africans to speak for ourselves in the internet space. But however, how protected are we in that space? Especially with the bill that we have, which is the 1978 apartheid bill that we are currently being regulated by. Um, as we are trying to amend this bill. So, um, Douglas from Wikimedia, can you please share with us um, how do we think we can navigate the space of the fourth industrial revolution and this copyright bill? As, as a lawyer yourself, how is it affecting the editors that are trying to edit in the space? And how is it affecting the African story and the misinformation of the African story? Thank you very much, Anati. Um, just a, a minor, minor correction. I, I'm actually a criminologist in my day job. So I, I, I study the sociology and statistics around uh, violent urban crime. Um, but yes, in my day job, I mean, in my uh, hobby, uh, very active hobby, I'm a Wikipedia editor, been one since 2006, uh, been a member of Wikimedia South Africa we, since 2012. And we are a, a non-profit membership organization. We represent Wikipedia editors in South Africa. Um, to, before I can answer Unati's question about the fourth industrial revolution and the place of the bill in it, I just want to give a bit of a backstory into our journey into this bill. Like, why, why does Wikipedia care about this issue? Why do Wikipedia editors care about it? 
And it came from um, a photographic competition that we organized back in 2012, Wiki Loves Monuments, who wanted to get photographs of monuments, South African monuments to feature on Wikipedia. We have the photographic competition. Halfway through it, we realize we cannot accept photographs of recently built monuments. And what this effectively means is that we can take all the photographs we like of colonial era monuments, share them freely over the internet and on Wikipedia, but we cannot do the same for uh, recently built monuments, such as monuments commemorating or celebrating the struggle against apartheid. So, uh, a photograph of um, Cecil John Rhodes, the art colonialist, built in 1900. Yep, we could take that photograph, we could share it on the internet, no problem. A, f a photograph of a statue of Nelson Mandela that's uh, sitting in front of the Union buildings. Nope, we cannot accept that photograph. Um, we don't have uh, a freedom panorama clause in this country. So, uh, and we, we, just can't, we just can't accept it. So our hands are tied. So uh, we launched a campaign um, to firstly try and figure out how we can get involved in advocacy because we had no idea what we were doing. And that's, that's how we met Ben. Um, and uh, we were one of the founding members of Recreate. And uh, since then, we've been calling for the um, inclusion of Freedom Panorama Clause that will allow us to allow members of the public to do things like take photographs of statues of Nelson Mandela or photographs of publicly located works of art, publicly, and um, share them over the internet. Because at the moment, the risk is for anyone taking a photograph of a publicly located work of art in South Africa, that they might be liable to pay royalties or you know, be taken to court um, for sharing that over the internet, which is quite a common thing, most of you find that outrageous. I'm happy to say the bill has got a Freedom of Panorama clause in it, um, and that's why we are such strong supporters of the bill, is because it's got this Freedom of Panorama clause, it fixes this problem. Um, in terms of the fourth industrial revolution, the, um, the reworking, uh, the reverse engineering clause in the bill is, is very good. I do have a background in computer science as well. Um, is very good for uh, uh, infant industry development and specifically the development of the technology sector in this country. Because if you want to um, build a technology platform that say does something quite specific, um, it's, it's cheaper and often easier to reverse engineer it than to have to figure out how I can buy, say, this widget that does the same thing from, a, say, a, a foreign creator. Uh, in fact, the foreign creator of that widget might never even want to give it to you. So that might be anti-competitive behavior that you can do nothing about. And so that's, you know, without this clause, it limits the uh, ability of South Africa to develop uh, a technology sector. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Douglas, for that um, um, input. It's very valuable to understand because, as I've said before, we are moving to a fourth. In fact, we are already in the fourth industrial revolution, and our lives are living there, whether we like it or not, but we are there as, as a global society. So it's going to be very important for us as Africans to be involved in these conversations of the fourth industrial revolution and the policies um, that should be um, reformed and the policies that should regulate us should make sure that they fit in so that we are able to to have access to a whole lot of things that we need to have access to and we are able to make businesses in the internet and not be restricted as currently we are we are being regulated by a 1978 apartheid bill that was a very good time something has to give um, having said that um, Mr. David from SATU, um, this bill is about knowledge and information, and we know how that has influenced a lot of us as black communities in this country, where we were not allowed during the apartheid system, during colonization, to have an influence. And in fact, some people, few people, minority people decided what kind of knowledge and what kind of information we have. And recently we've had Fees Must Fall campaign. We've seen how that has uh, affected the education system. Can you please reflect on that and how that is affecting? And in fact, why did we even have to endure the Fees Must Fall campaign? What is the reason why those students had to do what they did and how 
is it affecting them in terms of the copyright spill and why, why in fact, were, did we even have that, that, that campaign? Why did we have to endure that process? Over to you. Uh, thank, you. thank you very much, uh, Unati. Once again, my name is David Matsepe. I'm from SATU. From teachers' perspective, for those who do not know us, uh, SATU represents uh, approximately 264,000 teachers and education support staff. We are not only uh, representing teachers as teachers' union, you know, but also uh, support uh, education support staff uh, members and uh, we are also affiliated to education international a global trade union with approximately 32.8 million members across the globe uh, within the cap regime i must say that uh, satu believes that access to quality teaching and learning materials plays a prominent role in realizing knowledge contribution without any borders. For us, uh, as SATU, fair use of teaching and learning materials is also important to achieve the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 4 on both inclusive and equitable uh, quality education for all. We also noted that both national and international copyright laws often imposed unnecessary restrictions on uh, access to teaching and uh, uh, learning materials. Therefore, as part of enhancing uh, so solidarity, we will continue working tirelessly with uh, both Recreate, uh, Blind, SA, and all other related uh, stakeholders to achieve access to information and social justice for all. We also uh, we, we, will also, we will also continue to work with both SATU provincial and regional structures to educate our members uh, about the importance of uh, a CAP. So we have realized that some of, some of our members, they are not aware of a, a, a CAP, but uh, as a res responding uh, mechanism, we, 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 we are rolling out the, 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 the awareness campaign to make sure that uh, uh, we, 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 we educate those members. Uh, we will also intensify the solidarity work within the CAP regime uh, with international organizations such as Education International to realize our goal of making CAP uh, work in South Africa. Having said that, I conclude by saying that uh, in solidarity we stand and unite towards achieving a common goal. Uh, which is to attain a quality education for all. Forward with CAP forward. Forward. Thank you very much. Forward. Um, thank you so much, David. Um, um, Christo, um, from, from, from a vulnerable group position, um, and also to you, Sis Nambita, and also to you, Kayla, from the music musician's position, we know that in every society there's always vulnerable groups and that they're most affected. Um, and thank you, Ben, um, to making sure that you cover everyone in this conversation. So um, my question to you, um, Christo, would be, as someone who is from the blind um, people community, how has the current regime, the 1978 policy, affected your knowledge and information um, access? And how has it, it impacted it? Um, um, on many levels, and why has Blind SA taken, making sure that they take the president to court? What, what is the reason, what is driving you as, as an organization to say, we need to make sure that this bill is signed? Thank you. I mentioned before that only 0.5% of publications are available in accessible format in the country. And to increase the availability, we need to convert material into accessible format. To do that, we needed to grovel before publishers for permission to do so. And we were successful in only about 10% of our applications. I, th I really think 
the South African publishing industry must be the most mercenary one in the world because it, it really caused our book famine and we were not able to do much about it. My personal struggle has been 18 years now. We have tried everything we we tried to have meetings with DTI who gave us the cold shoulder. We spoke to other government officials. Once I had an appointment with Mr. Uh, uh, Nechitenze. We drove from Johannesburg to Pretoria. Halfway there, we got a message. Sorry, Mr. Nechitenze can't see us anymore. I think that's shabby treatment. Then came Marrakesh. Now, 10 years later, government still has not ratified Marrakesh. I don't know if there are any government officials listening to me. I hope there are. I want to say you should be thoroughly ashamed of yourselves for violating our rights, not, not giving two hoots about it until we had the success in court. But it's, it's been a, a struggle. We, we had a meeting with the... Uh, American uh, uh, trade representative, Jason, I did. I asked him the question that was asked yesterday. How come fair use is okay for you, but not for us? Well, you know, he says, it's different. Just a different place of a comma could make a huge difference. You know, that sort of nonsense we had to hear that day. Um, <clears throat> then, uh, especially when the cab was reverted to Parliament, Blind SA decided this is going to take years. <coughs> Sorry. We can't wait years anymore. We've got to do something. That's why we, we um, took the president and government to, to court. At the time, I sensed some apprehension on the side of my uh, uh, recreate colleagues who thought that if we were successful, we would jump ship. I gave them the assurance then, and I do it now, that we're not jumping ship because we need to continue with the battle. We, we, we won a fight, but we haven't won the war yet. We have blind creatives who can also benefit from uh, the provisions of the cab. So we are in it all along. But, you know, um, you will know, I've, I've said to some of you recreators before, I think recreate has been far too gentlemanly in the struggle because those opposed to the cab have really used dirty methods. I've seen them in forums that I attended where they attacked the person. There was that lady, I will not mention her name now, but, but they had her in tears in a meeting from the way they carried on. And then Ben mentioned mis, uh, mis, misinformation. I experienced that myself in August last year. I had to present at the International Book Fair in, in Durban. And I was a panelist there. There were four panelists. It wasn't arranged like that, but it so happened that two supported the cab and two did not. And the one who did not support the cab was an author and small publisher from Cape Town, uh, John Linegar. And he was so violently opposed to the cab, but you could hear it was, you know, he'd, he'd heard like sort of key words, but he didn't quite understand them, and he liked talking. And during one of the breaks, he told me, you know, all his, he was actually preparing my speech because he was telling me what he thought was, was wrong with the cab. And um, he told me then that, the, the problem with the cab is if, if the cab should ever come in, a school can buy one book and make copies for all the children. I told him that was a lot of nonsense, but he didn't listen to me. So on stage, he said that again. And I, I took him to pieces on stage. Unfortunately, one of, <laughs> one of the uh, other um, panelists agreed with me. So that sort of misinformation. Uh, another bit of misinformation, after our court victory, PASA wrote an article about it. They actually credited own dean for, for our victory. Um, it, that is such a lot of hogwash, because um, own dean's argument was that um, the Copyright Act of 78 
was not unconstitutional and that it's the, uh, section 13 would give us what, he wa what we needed. The judge threw out both those points. So how, how could he, the, you know, he attribute our victory to Owen Dean? Um, so, you know, as I say, they're using these methods and I really think um, Recreate should step up. The stories I heard from uh, my actor's friend here to my right last night, those stories should have been used long ago. Everybody should hear them. Um, everybody should see how clearly unfair uh, the, the old regime is. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, um, yeah. <coughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's personal stories like those that should really move us. I think we've managed um, during colonization to separate law and, personal, and people's personal lives. But yet these are the very same laws that regulates people's personal lives and relationships within family circles, within um, um, employee uh, environment. So this Nambita, you really spoke passionately about the word fair. Now you and I are closer speaking people. We're not English, right? And English has a way of explaining things, but when you want to experience this English explanation is you cannot experience it. I don't know if you've, if, if you've noticed it. Uh, there's so many words in English and I'm trying to bring them into my life experience. They just, I can't. They, like, it just does not, it, yeah, it, you know. Um, what is fair? And, 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 and how fair is fair when it comes to the processes, especially the misinformation processes that have happened and why we are still here with a bill that is not changed, which is a Vervoot bill, 1978. This is 2023, for goodness sake. We are still being regulated and ruled by an apartheid colonial bill. How fair is fair? <coughs> In other words, what I do for myself, I do for you with equality and equity. And I believe that's a good description of what is fair. I was, um, I was amused um, by you know, some of the people that were against the, the <laughs> copyright amendment bill. Sorry, I keep going back to the, uh, the when you're talking about the bill of, of 1978, do you realize that the bill that governs us as actors was written in the same year that I was born? <clears throat> I'm, 50, I'm 55 years <clears throat> old, people. And that was before television, let alone to speak of streaming. And that bill is in, is in effect right now and they refuse to amend it. How are you gonna tell me, how are we gonna talk about Netflix playing, you know, movies that I created in 2002 or even before that in the 90s? How are you gonna explain that to a bill that was created before even television? You can't, and yet they believe that we are being greedy. When we presented in 2018 in Parliament, uh, SABC came back to rebut that they don't know, they, they can't trace who they, sent, who they sold the packages to. Let's talk about user, user, for example. Let's talk about the lab. Let's talk about interrogation room. I'm very famous, by the way, in Jamaica and France. In Africa, I'm a very well-known person. I just have not earned anything out of that. The SABC claims that they don't know who bought those packages. So the question is, um, where do you think that money came from? The one that you put in your bank account. They wish, 
<laughs> I'm being upstaged by <laughs> by a recording. Thanks, Krista. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not a recording. It's my phone started speaking. <clears throat> There's no law for that. <laughs> When we, when we talk about the Copyright Amendment Bill, I was looking at the internet, it, it protects the rights of creators and creatives. When you talk about filmmakers who are coming from the US, France, and the UK, they come out of countries where those laws have been in effect for a very long time. And they obey those laws without question then they come here to our countries in South Africa, in Kenya, in, in Namibia, and they do not want to be governed by those laws, the same laws that they obey in their own countries. In other words, by Asidela, they have no respect for us. They have no regard for us. We mean nothing to them. Yet they spent millions upon millions of their currencies to stop these bills. What are they afraid of? That when we stand up, we're going to tower over them? We need each other in the entertainment industry. As musicians, as actors, producers, we all need each other. The pie is big enough for each and every one of us. We are all part of the creative process. I was taught when I was on set, um, one, of the, one of my favorite directors said to me, because I'm one of those actors who's incredibly technical. I want to know where the lighting <coughs> is, I want to know where the camera <coughs> is. Before I even start the rehearsal, I want to know where you want to be. I give you a rough draft of what I'm going to do, then I step back and you put your things in place, then I start working with the technical things. And in fact, it was a DOP that I worked with on Ashes to Ashes. He says, thank you for acknowledging us. I said, what are you talking about? He says, we're co-creators in this process. And just because we bring in the technical does not make us less than the person who is doing the dialogue and, and, and creating the character. We're here to capture whatever the performance is, and one without the other is useless. We are all creatives, whether you paint, whether you sing or you hold the microphone, if you're part of that creative process, you need to be protected by these bills and you will be protected by these bills. It's been proven in other countries worldwide. How are we so special that we don't need it? I'm off, okay. Thank you so much, Ms. Nambita. Um, that, that is important um, to understand that we all need these bills. And I think this panel has given us the, the, the diversity um, and the importance of that diversity when it comes to this bill. That is not just about creatives. There are educators, researchers, um, editors, everybody needs to be involved in this bill. So now I want us to move to, to, to another section, and this is where Kyla should come in. Um, say, okay, so we've got an experience where bills get passed or bill sits in the union building without the president signing them. And in this case, blind SAs have showed us that it's, it's possible to force the president to actually do something about the bill when they still sit with the bill in, 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 in the union. Yes, so yeah, so they were like, we know that your pen still has an ink, so make use of it. And it, it, it had to go to court for him to actually make an action out of it. So let's say this time around, Kyla, he signs the bill, and it does what President Zuma has done with the intellectual bill. It sits there, there's no implementation plan. We don't know what we're going to do. And you, as someone that has been protecting the musicians, and you understand the pain and the trauma of the musicians, what, what, what could be your advice? And, 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 and what can you say? Because I think there are a couple of government officials that are listening. We need to tell them exactly what we want them to do. 
we are their bosses it's not the other way around we're not their people they are our people and they need to know that um thanks susanati um i hope you don't mind i'm going to take a liberty like everyone else is doing and give a little bit of background um, in answering the question um, so as Unati mentioned, um, I'm from the music industry, I do artists and label management. I've also started an NGO that is about supporting artists um, and industry, people in the music industry and the economy of the music industry to have access to education and networking. And it was done in the spirit of there really hasn't been much support for creatives. Um, a lot of the time people just have passion and they kind of go into it and they're readily available for exploitation and it's yeah it's it's a very um it's a very ruthless industry we saw especially with things like covid um and you know if a lot of the time people think entertainment's a luxury um so it's, it's a lot of the time it's an industry that often is very vulnerable um, and what you find when you're in that industry is that there isn't a lot of access to some things that are, should be common knowledge when you're there, whether it's how royalties work, how copyright works, how distribution works. Um, a lot of the stuff is not available. So we started the NGO with the intention of having something that artists could connect with where you get that basic information. Um, similarly, when I started working with Recreate, it was on the basis of giving educational workshops for uh, mainly musicians, but also creatives, because a lot of them don't have um, a lot of awareness around copyright. I mean, that's not only the creatives in general, even, you know, a lot of academics or whoever might not have a lot of information around copyright. And that is really a big gap that Recreate has been filling is saying like, okay, this is how, why this is important. This is the history of copyright. This is the reform currently uh, happening in the country. And this is how you can participate in that process. So it's been incredibly inspiring to be part of something that is action oriented. We're not only saying these are all our problems, let's talk about all our problems, but we're saying this is how you can actually <coughs> actively participate in resolving these problems. And I feel very blessed to, come into this uh, at this late stage where there's been decades of work on the bill and on um, reforming copyrights in the country and we are so close to actually having this uh, monumentous bill passed and I mean we always say read the bills um, obviously it's quite complicated copyrights quite quite complicated and you might need assistance and understanding but we do tell everybody you know read the bills um, because when you read it, you'll see that all these boogeyman things that people are talking about is addressed in the bill, especially when you talk about fair use. You know, this idea that people are just going to take your creative works and start running and using them like as they want to, that is addressed in the bill. In fact, you have more protection with fair use um, to say that somebody's using your work without your permission and gaining income as opposed to, you know, what's currently in the 1978 Act. So it's definitely, well, there's this huge gap of education and information that Recreate is trying to help fill. And I feel like that's very much how I come into play. And you know, what we want to continue doing is helping to educate artists and therefore empower them and also collectively empower ourselves through participating in the legislative process. And I will add, you know, it is, as Anati knows, this, this is a very sore point for a lot of creatives, a lot of our legends. I mean, there's, a, there's even a scenario where we have our, our living legends who have contributed so much to our cultural identity, to our cultural identity around the world, who if you say their song or their movie or whatever, everybody knows what it is. But these people are dying poor. They're dying because they don't even have access to healthcare and there's very little recourse for them. Um, so I guess the answer to, you know, what would we do? I guess we just have to keep organizing and keep educating and keep uh, participating <coughs> in the process because, you know, it's, it's been difficult and there's many forces pushing against it. 
but if we do participate and if we do educate ourselves, then we actually can make a difference. And we've seen this even, for example, recently when they tried to completely change the bill um, in the, in the pre not this draft, just the previous one, they took out a whole bunch of clauses that gave exceptions for research and education and you know royalties and all these things. And we made sure, I, w I will be, I'm confident in saying that, you know, people at this table and people we were connected to and, you know, Recreate was helping to organize, did a, made a huge difference in making sure that they knew that they can't take out and change those things in the bill. And the bill's almost now back to exactly what it was before, um, with the exception of the prospective royalties, which is a big loss, meaning that as um, an actor, you won't be able to gain royalties <clears throat> on your past work if, for the future. So if your past work continues to gain royalties in the future, you can't uh, still gain those royalties. Um, but we've been uh, told that there is provision enough in the bill to amend that later. So our thing is, let's pass this bill. They're gonna look for any excuse not to pass it because they don't want the, the status quo to change. We want the bill to pass because it's, you know, it's, it's urgent. There's livelihoods on, at stake, multiple livelihoods, users and creators, and we just need it passed. From there, we can you know, get things like the prospective royalties. We can focus on implementation, which is really where we should be moving our energies to. And um, yeah, so I'm, I'm very much for the time is now. We need to push, we need to educate, and that includes creatives, that includes users. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kayla. Um, I, I think we need to move now to a conversation where, as South Africans, we need to understand as much as we want this bill to be signed, how do we think this bill can be implemented into making sure that people gain from this bill? Um, in our audience here, we have Ukok Sara, who's works, um, who worked at the Human Rights Foundation, which are the funders. And I think they are important in these conversations, the funders, because usually the funders want to tell us um, how we should run our organizations and what they want to fund. But do they understand the importance of funding the implementation of the policies? that we as civil society fight for. So um, if you can give us that perspective, Gogo. From uh, listening to Christo um, and the process it has taken South Africa to be in this regard, uh, in relation to this bill. Um, implementation is key, Unati. I want to recover from this trauma because over two, or, uh, over two months, I've been trying to plead with the creatives who are musicians, legends in this country. They are telling me all sorts. They've cooperated with me in a range of projects, gender-based violence, anti-xenophobia, They've cooperated, made songs, but when I talked about this issue, we even had a failed Zoom meeting where we're supposed to continue mobilize and raise awareness on how important it is. But later, slowly, we're achieving. Hence, we saw some of them here yesterday. It, it's difficult. The trauma is so much. So it takes time for bills to be legislated, then the implementation and the monitoring. Likely, we have the Department of Monitoring Evaluation, DPME, where some kind of a structure needs to be established that will ensure, I think with the same energy that is in this room, that will ensure that the implementation exists in reality because we are a country with a fatigue. Double doctorates in legislation, stacks and stacks of policies, very good, progressive in that matter. So the implementation is key. You mentioned I worked for a funder for 10 years. We were tasked to implement the constitution, to ensure that it goes out to the people. Uh, so to have an established body 
that ensures the enforcement of the registration in real so that it's not only in paper but it's realized and 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 beyond the realization and access to justice wherever we need interventions thanks thank you gogo um am i audible okay ben um when it comes to this as as, as a founder of recreate and we are here now right the parliament has again passed the bill that is the national assembly we're now waiting for the ncop to pass the bill so the bill is passed the bill goes to the president's office this time around he signs it how are we making sure that we move forward to making sure that we solve these issues that these artists have we solve these issues issues that the education sector has we solve these issues that the editing in the fourth industrial revolution is, is challenges are, are are met so how are we going to make sure that is the recreate but also how are we going to make sure that we organize everybody to be behind the very same energy that we had to be behind and, and making sure that people si the, the, the people submit the submissions, how are we going to make sure that we make sure that we get the same energy where this bill is implemented, where this bill works for people? Thanks, Sanati. Um, I, I jumped up because I was sneezing. It's allergies, but I don't want to sneeze all over everybody. Um, <laughs> um, you know, after a process like this where we're arguing about a piece of legislation for 10 years. There's, there's drawbacks and there's advantages, but the, the drawbacks are quite serious. I mean, the advantage is that, you know, there's more awareness about copyrights and copyright reform issues in South Africa than I think there, you know, anyone thought there ever would be. And there's an opportunity when the bill is passed to travel around the country, which we'll already be doing now as it goes into the National Council of Provinces and try and educate and deepen understanding. But there's also a massive problem of, of expectations. This copyright amendment bill is not going to transform the lives of every artist in South Africa. This copyright amendment bill is not going to transform the lives of every learner in South Africa who wants access to educational materials. It's a small step in relation to copyright. It does a few very important, valuable things when it comes to increasing access and ensuring people have royalties. Um, Nambita has been in many movies and, and TV shows where she hasn't been paid the royalties and we were heartbroken to hear the stories. Actually, the biggest problem in our creative sector is that there isn't enough money, there isn't enough resources, there isn't government commitment to um, the creative sector, and people's livelihoods are not going to change overnight by a bill that just brings in fair royalties. So, you know, we have to be careful in managing expectations as we move around. There will be a process of drafting regulations to implement the bill. It's really important that we get involved as civil society now that we've been involved in pushing the bill forward we're talking as if the bill is already passed into law hopefully it will be in the next 12 months and then we'll have to be involved in helping government to draft regulations it's it's going to be several years before some of the you know small impacts of this bill are actually felt by creators and users as people get the courage to start using its provisions right now broadcasters won't allow people to use footage under a fair use provision. They still won't when this bill is passed because there's a cultural change that's got to take place. It's going to take a long time, but we have to be, continue to be involved as civil society in that process. I have, I have a very funny, it's, I have a joke actually. Um, the SABC, which is a South African Broadcasting Corporation, is fully aware of the need for, art, for artists to be paid royalties because the standardized contract for freelancers, which was drafted um, f through the SABC, now different production companies that work with the SABC use this um, contract and they just change at the top and put the name of the production company. That contract, at the bottom of that contract, or rather halfway through, it says that the SABC promises to pay the artist, I think about 3% of the gross 
profit from whatever that production is to the artist. But the problem we have is that the SABC doesn't sign on that contract. So there is no way of collecting that money. But they're fully, fully aware that we should be give, given those, those royalties. They promise the royalties, but not the way in which you can get them. Wow. Um, I think it's time now to just open the discussions to the floor as well. Anyone with a comment, a question? Is there any comments or questions online? And can you please put up your hand if you would like to comment a question? This tabs are here. Okay, so you need to be ready. He's hard. He's like crystal here. Good afternoon. Yes, um, my name is Steve Hostatu. Um, I'm a, an activist, or rather say I'm an artivist. I'm an artist, um, a music composer, singer, songwriter, producer, as well as uh, an activist. So I want to put Satu, uh, my comrade from Satu on the spot. Um, where, what, what, is, what is actually Satu's official position? Because it's quite uh, confusing to see Satu on the one hand support um, um, Tumsa, which is a, uh, it's not a, it's an ample union. They're not a union even yet because, uh, you know, there's a process to follow with the uh, Department of Labor to get to become a union. But, um, um, you know, they tell me that they are being what you call uh, mentored by Satu. Uh, and, and they've been on record on, with Satu, a uh, spokesperson, to say they are actually against the bill. And yet, uh, you are here with us, uh, supporting the bill. So, uh, so it gets confusing, and I think it's an internal issue that uh, Satu needs to uh, clear, uh, so that we are all clear about your stance. Thank you. Thank you, Tabza. Over to you, David. Uh, just to provide uh, clarity-seeking, because. Uh, it seems like you are confusing Satu with with uh, Kosatu, but uh, we as Satu we 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 fully behind. Uh, I mean, rallying behind the the copyright bill uh, in South Africa. So uh, I, I I hope uh, you don't you don't uh, mix the two, Kosatu and and, and, and Satu. Okay. Um, Follow up. Uh, okay. Hold on. Information. It, it's great to see you again, Comrade Disruptor. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> your, nick, your nickname, not our nickname for you. You know, what, what, what you're revealing, Tabaho, is, is, is a lot of this confusion that's been out there and, and changing of positions. So, Kasatu, because I think we have to include some of the international visitors who are not familiar with what everything stands for and, you know, the, some of the internal politics. The largest trade union federation in South Africa, Kasatu, has been divided over support for the bill because they have um, SADTU, the education union, um, as one of their affiliated unions, um, very much and very strongly supporting the bill, as David said. And then they have one group of musicians organized under the name TUMSA, the Union of Musicians of South Africa. It's not actually a, a musician's union, but it's some musicians wanting to form a union uh, who had gone to the Trade Union Federation and said, um, you know, could we form a union? Would you help us? But by the way, we are opposed to the Copyright Amendment Bill. Why are they opposed to the Copyright Amendment Bill? Because the record companies had persuaded them to be opposed to the Copyright Amendment Bill. And because some of their members, I mean, there may even be people on the Zoom call who can correct me where I get it slightly wrong, but some of their members were also on the board of the collecting societies, or were somewhat, um, you know, n not fully informed about the content of the bill. Tumsa, actually, the, um, some of the, the, the leaders of, of that organization have let us know that they're now supporters of the bill. They now recognize that the bill contains fair royalties provisions and fair use provisions, that the fair use provisions um, include a test against um, substitution in the market for the original work. And the latest that we hear is that Tumsa is not opposed to the bill anymore. 
um, unless we hear something different in the next few minutes. And we, we've been informed by Kasatu, and it's important that we say this. So the Congress of South African Trade Unions has very clearly informed us in the last several weeks repeatedly over and over again and clearly that they are supporters of the bill and there is no obstacle left to them supporting the bill. And in fact, Kasatu had wanted to uh, be represented today and bring that message at this conference, but they had some conflicting commitments. So I think that division has actually gone away unless I'm out of date by 10 minutes. Anyone else with a comment or question? Check? There's, okay. Can I, can I have her okay. speak Let first? me just add on. Okay, mm. um, you can go. Yeah, just to add on uh, uh, Ben, uh, we, we, we have been making a series of uh, submissions throughout uh, this camp. Uh, and then I'm also assuring you that uh, Satu <coughs> is 100% behind the bill. I mean, rallying behind this, uh, mm. uh, this amendment bill. And we are looking forward for Parliament and all provincial legislatures to, to, to take forward the process. and seen the the, the, the the bill becoming the act of uh, parliament thank you so much thank you so much david to you tris so, uh, so thank you very much uh, to the panelists for all your really diverse and interesting insights on this bill um so i'm Teresa hackett from electronic information for libraries we're an international ngo that works with libraries in developing and transition economy countries so i have one comment and one question um my comment is that i i think it's really great that you're thinking ahead and you're looking ahead to how the bill by, might be implemented. Um, I think it gives hope as, as the process moves forward and you're starting to think in concrete terms as to you know, how it might benefit people. And, um, and I think especially when you've spent a long time on it and it's been a long, hard struggle, and now you know, you'll have some results at the end. I can make an analogy to the Marrakesh Treaty uh, that was talked about earlier, you know, that took a, longish number of years uh, and when it was finally adopted we had a good treaty and now we are working hard to implement the treaty on the ground and get libraries to start using the treaty and that's very rewarding after you've put a lot of your own you know, personal time and energy so I, I uh, you know I commend you for that and then my question is briefly um, on the process going forward. So we know that the bill is at the National Council of uh, Provinces, the NCOP. There's, a, as you, you mentioned, uh, Unadi, at the beginning, there is the public consultation, which is closing on Friday. We as an organization have uh, submitted, will be submitting comments um, to that bill. And But I wanted to ask kind of, specifically about how what is the process at the NCOP in the light of the retagging of the bill as a 76 a section 76 bill and how can we as the international library community support you in um, in 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 having the bill adopted in its next hopefully final stage thanks a lot okay over to Dennis um, yes, the, the bill currently, as you say, the NCOP Select Committee on Trade and Industry, it's got a long name, has got a, a call out for submissions for Friday this um, coming week. Um, but the pr nine provinces, the provincial legislators also will put out calls for um, public hearings, uh, I mean submissions and public hearings in their different provinces. Now already the Western Cape is advertising, uh, calling for submissions already, and they um, closing date, I think, is the 10th of March. So um, you can submit to one or both, um, but if you're in a particular a province, it's very good to tailor it to that province. So some of us have put in one to the NCOP, and then we're tailoring it to the, so say for the Western Cape, we will give examples where this bill will help the Western Cape. Um, and you give examples if you live there, why sort of things will uh, apply to that. Con um, and, and I think that's the way we should do that. Um, they are also having online and face-to-face uh, -face, um, hearings. I understand that if you have submitted to um, one, like the Western Cape and um, the NCOP, you can give one hearing. We just want a bit of clarity on that. Um, also, the one date, the 7th of, I think it's the 7th of March, that the Western Cape is are having face-to-face -face hearings in Cape Town, 
but they're also having it in, on other days in other areas in Cape Town. But the NCOP is also having it on the 7th. Um, so they, I questioned that, and they said that they would um, make a plan that if, you, you know, if you're in Cape Town, you can do the online one for the NCOP. Um, so there is a bit of clarity that we need to get from you know, how the process will work for the online uh, hearings. But anybody who submits and you want to make a public hearing, in your submission and in your email to them, you must say you would want uh, you know, to, be, uh, to present. And they will then put you into the um, matrix, as they said, of schedule. Um, the schedule. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think also my little advice that I can offer is that maybe Kyla, Ben, and, and Doug, this is something that we need to work on in terms of the website, where we give info, full information of the process and where we need to take it, so Wikimedia can have that full information and Recreate website can have that full information so that everybody is aware of what's going on. I want to just add something that um, So there'll be provincial hearings in all the provinces, and then the provinces will have to give their um, National Council of Province members, like senators, a mandate on how to vote or what position to take in the National Council of Provinces. And then the National Council of Provinces has to have a position. There could well be a vote, even though at the moment the ANC majority means that the ANC can make the decision outside of the National Council of Provinces. And then if the National Council of Provinces decides to accept the bill, um, it will be accepted, it will go to, back to the National Assembly to be ratified and then back to the President to be signed into law. If the National Council of Provinces doesn't uh, take a simple vote in support of it, then it's a nightmare. Then there is a process of mediation between the National Council of Provinces and the National Assembly, which I don't think has ever been tested before. But anyway, everyone says, all the lawyers say it's a total nightmare. So we hope that won't happen. One last thing is that how could international folks make submissions to provinces in South Africa? Because the whole point is that it's gone down to a province. Why is it the business of Theresa Hackett or anybody else in the world? What happens in a province in South Africa? Um, and this is a contradiction of it being retagged, is that we never thought, we still don't think, that it really touches that much on any provincial competencies, which are, you know, for the, the citizens of a province, really, not for international, you know, um, much as we may love you and want your solidarity to be that concerned with. But there's two thoughts on that. One is, um, uh, well, well, one main one is maybe you could make submissions about how you feel a bill like this, the copyright bill in South Africa affects local communities on the ground. Make comments on sort of decentralized issues in implementation of you know, access to knowledge on the ground. Maybe we could give you case studies which you could then use or something like that. But I think there's got to be a difference between your submissions at national level and ones that you would make in the provinces because of the fact that it's then about you know, discussions within a particular province or community. You could make comments on, well, in our view, we think the Western Cape or we think the Eastern Cape is this kind of a province and therefore you should be interested for that reason. Alternatively, you could help us with some support or resources so that our people on the ground can make more submissions in the individual provinces. Thanks. Um, thank you so much, Ben, for that contribution. Um, any more comments, questions on the floor? Okay, La this is going to be the last comment. We've only have four minutes left before we head off to the uh, union buildings. Yeah, Comrade Ben, I uh, just need to make addition on 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 process of submission. So we, as such, we have just submitted our our own submission, and then we had a, a response from from committee secretary, and I wish to share it with uh, the entire house. So. <laughs> She is saying the submission of SATU is hereby received and acknowledged. We also note the wish of your organization to part participate in public hearings. Please know that uh, the committee will be holding a visual uh, public hearing on the 21st February 7th and 14 March, respectively. Please know that uh, these dates are still subject to change. We will be in contact with you 
closer to the time with the meeting link and to inform you of the date and time of allocated slot for oral comments. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, David. Um, it's pretty clear that um, this, this work that we're doing is not just for the show. It's also not for a limited time. It's for a lifetime. I think as Ben said, once the bill gets passed, we still have a long way to go. And I'm pleading with the academia, with the legal um, and institutions, um, but mostly with the sponsors of funders to keep funding the copyrights um, bill, whether it's amended after, because we're still going to need to re-amend it over and over, but also just to make sure that it gets implemented so that musicians, actors, educators get what they deserve out of the bill. Thank you so much. Enjoy the union building tour and also enjoy life after. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you everyone for attending the Right to Research in Africa conference at the University of Pretoria. We are now, Teresa, yeah, Tariqita Hackett's going to explain where we're going next. Thank you. Thanks very much. Um, for those of you who are coming on the Union Building Tour, so the bus is going to be outside, the, outside in the car park and uh, he'll, be, he'll be there at four o'clock and we'll have a tour guide and a two hour tour of the union buildings and the bus will bring us then back to our hotel. Thank you. <laughs>